Hi boys and girls, it's Miss McCorder again, and I decided to just stick with uh, my friend Andrea Beatty, and I'm going to read Rosie Revere Engineer, illustrated by David Roberts. So this is the same author who wrote Ada Twist that I've already read, and I bet if you will look carefully, you might see her in this book as well. So let's begin. Rosie Revere Engineer. This is the story of Rosie Revere, who dreamed of becoming a great engineer. In Lilla Greer's classroom at Blue River Creek, young Rosie what sat shyly, not daring to speak. <gasps> I see a few faces I recognize from the other book. Oh, Ada's kind of hiding, isn't she? There she is. But when no one saw her, she peeked in the trash for treasures to add to her engineering stash. At late, or er, and late, late at night, Rosie rolled up her sleeves and built in her hideaway under the eaves. <gasps> See, everybody else left. Now she's looking in the garbage for good stuff. Alone in her attic, the moon high above, dear Rosie made gadgets and gizmos she loved. And when she grew sleepy, she hid her machines far under the bed where they'd never be seen. So she's doing it all in secret. Hmm. Looks like she's got some really cool stuff, doesn't it? When Rosie was young, she had not been so shy. She worked with her hair swooped over one eye and made fine inventions for uncles and aunts, a hot dog dispenser and helium pants. <gasps> oh my goodness. They all look so happy. They love her inventions. The uncle she loved most was Zookeeper Fred, she made him a hat to keep snakes off his head. From parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keeps the python away. <laughs> and when it was finished, young Rosie was proud. But Fred slapped his knee and he chuckled out loud. He laughed till he wheezed and his eyes filled with tears all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who stood there embarrassed, perplexed, and dismayed. She looked at the cheese hat and then looked away. I love it, Fred hooted. Oh, truly I do. But Rosie Revere knew that could not be true. She stuck the cheese hat in, on the back of her shelf, and after that day, she kept her dreams to herself. So Uncle Fred hurt her feelings. I don't think he meant to. I think he really liked it. Do you ever do that? Do you laugh? You see something so surprising, it makes you laugh? Hmm. And that's how it went until one autumn day, her oldest relation showed up for a stay. Her great-great Aunt Rose was a true dynamo who worked building airplanes a long time ago. She told Rosie tales of the things she had done and goals she had checked off her list one by one. She gave a sad smile as she looked to the sky. The only thrill left on my list is to fly. But time never lingers as long as it seems. I'll chalk that one up to an old lady's dreams. So that means that her great great Aunt Rose thinks that maybe she's too old to fly now. My pages are stuck. That night as Rosie lay wide-eyed wide in bed, a daring idea crept into her head. Could she build a gizmo to help her aunt fly? She looked at the cheese hat and said, no, not I. But questions are tricky and some hold on tight. And this one kept Rosie awake through the night. And when dawn approached and the red streaks lit the sky, young Rosie knew just how to make her aunt fly. So even though she didn't want to, even though she said she didn't, she couldn't do it, when she laid in bed late at night, 
she got ideas for how to do it. That idea wouldn't let go. She worked and she worked till the day was half gone, then hauled her cheese copter out in onto the lawn to give her invention a test just to see the ridiculous flop it might turn out to be. Mm, oh my goodness, a cheese copter. Strapped into the cockpit, she flipped on the switch. The Helio cheese copter sputtered and twitched. It floated a moment and then whirled round and round, then froze for a heartbeat and crashed to the ground. Oh dear, but it's pretty cool. Then Rosie heard laughter and turned round to see the old woman laughing and slapping her knee. She laughed till she wheezed and her eyes filled with tears. All of the horror of Ro to the horror of Rosie Revere, who thought, oh no, never, not ever again will I try to build something to sputter or spin or build with a lever, a switch or a gear and never will I be a great engineer. Oh my goodness. So great, great Rose, Aunt Rose is laughing and look at poor Rosie. I think her heart is broken, just like the cheese copter. She turned round to leave, but then great, great Aunt Rose grabbed hold of young Rosie and pulled her in close and hugged her and kissed her and started to cry. You did it! Hooray! It's the perfect first try. This great flop is over. It's time for the next. Young Rosie was baffled, embarrassed, perplexed. I failed! said dear Rosie. It's just made of trash. Didn't you see it? The cheese copter crashed. Yes, said her great aunt. It crashed. That is true. But first, it did just what it needed to do before it crashed, Rosie. Before that, it flew. Your brilliant first flop was a raging success. Come on, let's get busy. And on to the next. She handed a notebook to Rosie Revere, who smiled at her aunt as it all became clear. Life might have its failures, but this was not it. The only true failure can come if you quit. Look at Rosie with all her ideas. Look at that. They worked till the sun sneaked away into its bed. Aunt Rosie tried her or tied her headscarf around Rosie's head and sent her to sleep while, with a smile ear to ear to dream the bold dreams of a great engineer. And look, they wrote on the, the cheese copter, we can do it. At Blue River Creek, all the kids in grade two build gizmos and gadgets and do hickeys too. With each perfect failure, they all stand and cheer, but none quite as proudly as Rosie Revere. Can you find Ada? I see her in there. Look at all the cool inventions that they engineered. Yeah. They don't all work. And here on the last page, Rosie's waving goodbye. Oops. As her great great aunt Rose flies away in the cheese copter. The end. I hope you enjoyed Rosie Revere. See you later, boys and girls.